All right, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call the meeting to order. It's 6.30. Donna, can you be secretary pro tem for the evening? I can try. Okay, I'll help you. Uh, have a roll call. Donna Bronk, present. Malcolm White, present. Uh, Jim Giberti, present. Okay, bing, bing. We have minutes from the April 27th meeting. Uh, I, I, I'm going to suggest that we postpone them because there's not a, I wasn't here, I can't vote on them. There's only two of you. Oh, <laughs> correct. Well, we can get a vote on them, but it won't be legal, so. I guess we will postpone it. Jimmy. <laughs> You're funny. But it's true. Okay, we're postponing those for next meeting. Citizens participation. Looks like a negative. Okay, sewer business. Now on center stage, we will have a report on CZM. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. My name is Russ Kleekamp. I'm an engineer with uh, GHD and Anastasia Rodenko as well, engineer with GHD. Could you spell your name, last name for me, Russ? Sure. It's K-L-E-E-K-A-M-P. M-T? Uh, P is in Peter. P. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to present tonight a project we've been working on with, uh, the, sewer, with the sewer department. We've been engaged with uh, the Massachusetts Office of Coastal Zone Management on a project to rehabilitate three of the more important pump stations in town, specifically to make them flood proof by the means of dry flood proofing, uh, basically saying we're not allow allowing water to come inside. Right. Um, so we're gonna give you an update with that and then we're gonna uh, present to you two other grant opportunities that we would ask uh, for your consideration to sign a letter of support at the end of that, um, at the end of our presentation. So I'm gonna turn it over to Anastasia to talk about the pump station project, but would it be okay if I maybe turned the light off? Please do. You might see a little better. <laughs> yes, seat too. Anastasia, yes. can I have your last name? Sure, it's Rudenko, R-U-D as in Delta. R-U-what, D? D-E-N-K-O. K-O. <coughs> they have last names like this intentionally to keep yeah. you on your toes. Yes, of course. It only took me till second grade to learn how to spell that, but. All right, so I'm going to start with a, a very quick project background, and then I'm going to give an overview of the different coastal resilience mitigation measures that we're looking at. Um, and the three stations that we're looking at are Narrows, Heinz Field, and Cohasset Narrows. Narrows? Heinz Field. Oh, Heinz Field, okay. Yeah. And then uh, Cohasset Narrows. Okay. So as Russ mentioned, this project is being done through a grant with uh, the Massachusetts Office of Coastal Zone Management. And the project is 75% grant funding with a 25% cost share. The purpose of the project is to de uh, develop permit level designs for the three priority pump stations for coastal resilience improvements. So this is a map of the town of Wareham. And everything in <coughs> blue and purple is within the 100 year flood zone. And the three pump stations that we're focusing on for this project is Cohasset Narrows, which is where all of the Bourne infrastructure, including the Bourne Fire Department and Police Department, tie into the Wareham system. Heinz Field, which um, has the Onset Fire Department and Onset. And Narrows, which um, serves the entire western portion of Wareham. So these are three very critical pump stations. They all have critical infrastructure such as hospitals, police stations, and fire departments that you want to be operational in a storm situation. So these are the three pump stations and the graphic at the bottom is a rendering of the design flood that we're designing for. Um, so this is the 100 year flood plus re required minimum pre-boards and an accommodation for a sea level rise, which is something that the grant specifically asked us to look at as we design these improvements. This is a model of the Narrows Pump Station, but it highlights, so if you're looking at a design flood of elevation that's up near your door, you have a lot of potential entry points within the door and within the windows and the louvers in the pump station. So as Russ mentioned, what we're doing is we're looking to make this watertight so you don't have those entry points. If the water did get in, 
all of your major equipment is below that design flood elevation. These are the, the pumps and the motors, and there would be severe electrical damage. In addition, um, these pump stations weren't designed to have that much water pressure pressing onto the inside of the building, and you're looking at potential structural collapse. So we'll also talk about accommodations to fortify those walls. One of the measures that's being recommended are flood doors. Um, these look very similar to a regular door. You have single leaf and double leaf, and they provide a watertight barrier. And they're also designed to be able to handle that structural load of all the water pressing onto the door. Um, if you'll remember, the water level was about here on all three stations. Each station has two big louvers. Um, that are meant to provide adequate ventilation for the generator when it's running. And it's also a way to remove equipment. Um, so this generator here, because of the layout of the pump station, that louver is the only way you can get the generator in and out of the building if you ever need to replace it. However, the louvers are also a potential source of water entry. Um, the recommendation for these is a stop log system, such as the one shown in the upper right hand corner. And what this will do, you can remove the stop logs and it'll allow the operators to have the functionality to be able to replace equipment as needed. Um, but it'll also serve as a barrier in, the, in a flood event. And the reason that you need them to be boxed out like this is so you can maintain adequate ventilation. So if you put it right up against the louver, um, you would be diminishing the capacity of that louver and you wouldn't have ventilation when the, the generator was running. You can't do adequate ventilation through the roof? I'm sorry? You can't do adequate ventilation through the roof? We did look at that. This is a, a more cost of effective option because you're not cutting through the roof. But yes, you could put intake and exhaust louvers on the roof also. Um, but again, you have that dual functionality of needing to get the equipment out. And then for every station, there, um, there are windows and there are ventilation, smaller ventilation louvers do you have one that actually works this side on me? Yeah. Thank you. Um, and we're going through and anything that's below the design flood, recommending that it's blocked up and louvers are relocated. So this one's just being moved a little bit higher and any windows would be blocked up also. And then, <coughs> excuse me, any conduit would be relocated so that's not a potential water entry point also. This is a, a waterproof epoxy spray system that would go right on the outside of the building and it would pre both prevent water from getting into the building and also from water of soaking into that wall. And the issue with the water soaking into the wall is when the floodwaters recede, until those walls dry out, you're gonna have a very humid situation in your pump station, which is detrimental to equipment. So this is designed to stop it before it, it starts penetrating the brick and the CMU. Um, and this is the, the stucco finish of what it would look like and it's available in different whites and grays. And it would be an exterior coating. I mentioned <coughs> previously that the, the walls weren't designed for the structural load that's anticipated in the design flood. Um, both the Narrows and the Heinz Field pump stations were built in the 1970s and they have no reinforcement. So it's just brick and CMU blocks. This is a, a interior structural bracing system that would give you the strength to prevent it from bowing in and potentially collapsing. You said that would be interior? Interior, use. yes. So this is a, a rendering of uh, narrows, just to give you an idea of what it would look like on the interior of the building. And we've been working with Guy to make sure that the spacing for these aren't gonna be a detriment to the operators that need to move around and um, function within these pump stations. The third pump station that we're looking at, Cohasset Narrows, was built in the late 1980s. It's a newer design and it actually has rebar, so it's a much stronger wall. So when we did the hydrostatic calculations, we found that it's only a little bit past its allowable um, loading stress. So for this, rec we're recommending uh, carbon fiber strips. These are often used in basements. They were used in LaGuardia Airport and also in Braintree High School. And they're meant if you just need a little bit of vertical reinforcement for your wall. And that's a, a typical installation right there.
design guidance also recommends that you keep a large amount of generator fuel on site so that if you lose power, you're able to maintain the operation of your generator until that comes back on. Um, and each of the generators in Narrows and Heinz Field has a belly tank underneath with not quite enough capacity. Um, so we're looking at putting in vertical tanks with extra storage in each, um, in each pump station. And the third station, Cohasset Narrows, has a natural gas generator, so it doesn't have this issue. The last thing that we're looking at is, say something happens and your pump station goes down, you want a way to be able to convey the wastewater to the upstream and keep going to the wastewater facility. So this is a bypass system. Um, typically you have your flow coming in through gravity to the pump station and then it gets pumped out through the force main. So this is a, a series of valves that allow you to pump straight from the gravity system to the force main and completely bypass the pump station if you had a major equipment failure and to keep conveying that water until you get it back on. This is a picture of a recent installation where they put in um, a bypass. So you typically do this in the middle of the night when you have your lowest flows and you have everything assembled and then about two or three in the morning you cut into your pipes and you put this new valving in so that you can turn off the station and keep the water flowing. There's two typical configurations for this. So in Cohasset Narrows, um, the location we're looking at for the bypass connection is in the middle of the driveway. So you would put it in a manhole so that you could um, maintain the use of that driveway. And then if you ever needed it, you would take off the manhole cover and you would bring in a pump that would connect to this quick disconnect. In Heinz Field, it's in the middle of a grassy area. So you could do an above ground connection and this would just be a little bit easier for the operators to be able to hook into the system. And this is um, an example of what that would look like. Is that Falmouth in Harbor? Which one? That's Falmouth, yeah. I'm sorry? Which, uh, which item there is, is what we're looking at? The one in the middle right in the um, This right here. Oh, is that what we'd be looking at? That little, the little pipe over there? Yes, yeah, so it, it's similar to this. Oh, okay. Um, where it's a little gooseneck and you would tie into here with your uh, bypass pump. What, what's this other thing that's in there? This is actually yes, the hand. pump station itself. Oh, so okay, that's the so access. that you go down through the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. it's a, basically a big gotcha. can buried right. underground. So I'm going to let you talk sure. about Sure. So does anyone have any questions before we keep moving on? Okay, the, uh, the next step, what, we're, um, what we were tasked with, with the current CZM grant, was to develop the, what we call permit ready plans, basically a set of documents that we could take to conservation, the building department, and Mass DEP, and say here are our proposed changes for these three pump stations. Uh, what we'd be proposing to do under the next CZM grant is to acquire those permits and develop a complete 100% final design, something that would be bid ready that we could uh, advertise, we could get contractual numbers, and then you know at some point in the future proceed to construction. But the immediate grant, uh, and we have two, two applications, so this would be application number one. Uh, this would be to complete the final design plans for these three stations. Um, the second project, or the second grant application that we would be requesting is to install uh, just the bypass, the last feature that we sh showed to you. Uh, that would be within the financial range of the grant, and we feel that we could get these to uh, bid and installed under this next round of the grant, probably in the $150,000 to $200,000 range. But again, 75% of that is a match and it gives the town a very uh, thoughtful upgrade to their infrastructure or something. And it's not only in the event of emergency, in any event, if a, pump, uh, if a pump within the station has to be repaired, maintained, fixed, replaced, this will allow uh, for the bypass pumps to come in and almost achieve that seamless transferability between maintenance and permanent. So it's a common item for modern pump stations to be designed with, but we feel that we could get this in the ground if we are selected for this grant. Um, if, we get the, if we were to get both of those grants, uh, you're looking at about a $60,000 cost to us. Uh, it, it may be a little more for each grant. It's, it's going to be similar to this one. Do we have the, the final numbers for the, for the design? I think it's in that. Not yet, but I'm assuming about $150,000, maybe a, a little less. So that would be about 150000 for the final design plan, so 25% of that would be? 60000 roughly. 
Um, less no, less than that. Be less than that. Less be, than that. Be about 40. 40 42, 500, yeah. I think, for so, that one. Yeah, yeah. 40. Because at this particular grant that they're talking about here, our cut was 48,000 we owe, and uh, it's a $195,000 grant, of which 48 is from us, the rest is coming from the state. And there's also in-kind services that the town is providing as well. For this uh, grant, it was roughly $4,000 of in-kind services as well. So it'd be about 42,000 for the uh, final design of the three stations, and then about another 45. So you're, you're, you're in the scale of $90,000 uh, commitment at the town, but then you'd be receiving uh, in the three to $400,000 range of grant funds. Questions, concerns, comments? And if, when you're digging, if you strike oil, that's ours. Excuse me? I said when you're digging on this, if you strike oil, it's ours. It's the town does uh, uh, retain the mineral rights for their properties, so. <laughs> we do have the letters prepared on letterhead. Uh, I think the application is due June 8th. We can either circulum, circulate them tonight and look at potentially signing them, or we can circulate them and they can be reviewed and signed at a later date, but just before we submit this on uh, June 8th, it would be beneficial to have these letters signed, letters of support. Mm -hmm. And I would request if it's, if it's the board's pleasure to sign those tonight or wait, but I, I think moving forward, these grants are great opportunities. Uh, we have no guarantee to get the grant, however, if we're not in a position to apply, I, I think uh, we won't get it to grant, but at the very least apply. And I'm asking the board if they would support us in, in these grant applications, so. Okay, we don't have to front any money to apply. Is that no, correct? No, no, no. Okay. no. And nor do we have to spend money if we get approved. But, you know, again, you've seen in the past we've done that, but it's in the best interest of the town to move forward. But I just want to say, because I think your question is about, uh, and at least I'm understanding, it's about commitment of spending the $90,000. So uh, we don't have to put any money up to, to apply. Once we get the grant, um, I would like to move forward and we figure out where we get the 90,000, but um, you're under no obligations. We, we and I, Go ahead. We shouldn't have a problem coming up with, with, with the money because we certainly transferred enough money over to the town. So I'm sure that we can get this into our budget, can't, can't we? We certainly can, and if it isn't, we can write it into the budget, and if it's not there, um, then we have retained earnings we could get at the fall town meeting. So I'm not overly concerned about the $90,000. I'm truly not. I just want to make sure that the value of that 90, which I believe is, is a good value, but just I want the board to be comfortable with the value of that $90,000. And let me add that at the Narrows pump station, we're going to do um, inspection of that force main from the Narrows to the treatment plant. Mm -hmm. And this very pit, we have to install one to put the equipment in. Mm -hmm. And not only is it good for putting equipment in and bypass, and it's also good if you just want to clean your lines. We don't have the ability to clean our force mains. This would give us that ability. And one of the reasons why we're inspecting that force main is no one's looked at it since 1970s. And so we question the, you know, the strength and the uh, condition of that. So this would give us a, an opportunity to clean regularly and to inspect regularly, along with emergencies for the pump or even routine emergencies or catastrophic emergencies. So it's, it's a good investment. We don't have the money, we can do a bake sale. I, I, I'd like to make a motion that we, that we, we sign on to yeah, give them the signatures yeah. tonight so that they can go ahead Let's with move this. move forward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't want to drag our feet. I want to I want to move forward. Right. Yep. Let's be right in line for this. So. Should we second it, please? I'll second it. Oh, yeah, Thank you. Definitely. All in favor? Aye. Three of Move forward. There's two separate letters here, one's mm -hmm. for each project, and there's five signature lines. Um, we got it. Okay. All right. Good. Sure. sure. You want this one, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a, a very good way to. Yeah. I think we should do it. Getting to the point where I want to spend money every year. I want it in the budget for capital improvement. Absolutely. So this is a good way to. Yeah. Maybe the next time he comes, he's going to bring. Yep. Good stuff. 
and it's not going to affect the rate payers at all. It's also in the rate payers' best interest to protect their investments. Or, yeah. I like the idea that the buildings aren't tear down, so yeah. the fixes are simple. Yeah, you have to cut. they're affordable and they're not yeah. overly outrageous for what we're trying to do. Yeah, it's wise to put the bypasses in if we can do it now. Just smart. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have anything else you're going to scare us with? No. This is this is uh, all we brought for tonight. So um, if there's no other questions. We'll just take a minute and uh, oh, break down our equipment here and sure. get away. Sure, not a problem. Yeah, I think. Our chances are better than a lot of towns because yeah. we're so sensitive with well, all the shoreline. I, think, I think yeah. we're not only thank that, you. Is we're, uh, thank you for your presentation. Thank you, thank very, you much very much for having us. We appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, those are the kind of presentations oh, I like. It's always a pleasure to boom, see you. Boom, boom, boom. Thank you. Done. Thank you. Done. I agree. Next time, coffee. <laughs> you told us that before. We didn't I said. Uh, uh, strike two. <laughs> strike two. <laughs> 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 Uh, oh, yeah. God, it's a whole new world when he does that. Okay, we've got uh, bond usage fee for the fourth quarter. One of these critters. The bill to the town of Bourne is 98,342.52. Yes, Mr. Chairman, that's the uh, actual bill, and we broke into four quarters, and it's just a pretty straightforward okay, commitment straightforward. to Mr. Right. Foster. Yep. Okay. <coughs> yeah, you said this needs to be signed. Is that in here as well? In this blue oh, is that? It should be in the blue. Uh, I hope that she put it in the blue folder. Yes. She should. Okay, let me check. Sticky. All right, I make a motion that we, we sign it, Mr. As written. As yeah. written. Yeah. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Okay, let's take care of this little critter. Name's here again. Sorry about that. I'm going to bring extra pens. I usually have them. I don't know where you don't. Poor guys. That don't have to work and spend the summer so saying we can't remember everything. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're breaking my he, heart. No, he brought it. Oh, look at that. Oh. Bye. There you Thank go. you. Thank you. Thank you. Probably won't need it again either, guy. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Okay, next. Here you go, sir. Done him. Yep. Done him. Thank you. I'll come over to that one in a minute. That's great. Okay, we've got some agreements here for approval. One is Kinsman Electric. Hold on a minute. Sign. Um, You're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thanks you a lot. Have a nice night. Yes, Mr. Chairman, they're um, agreements. They've been vetted by council. I think last time we were before you, we did not have the council sign off. Uh, Mr. Bowen signed off uh, as to form. Now, the electrical contract with Kinsman, it's a service contract and simply means if we need electrical services that will bring them in to do that. Yep. 
I'm sitting with uh, Mr. Kingsman himself, Don, and what I'm asking is what would it cost me to have an electrician dedicated to the plant approximately 15 hours a week, 20 hours a week, and give me a cost of that. I've also talked to the, um, to the human resource officer about a full-time electrician. So before we make any decisions, I want to get the concept from Mr. Kinsman for that part-time number, get the number for full-time, and then present that again to, to uh, the human resource officers for a, for a, 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 for a decision going forward. I have in talked interim, to about that. You know, in the interim, I have to have the ability to hire an electrician if we need it. Yeah. So that, I don't have this any problem with the rates. So. Yeah. So All right. That's cut and dry. Okay. The, now let me understand what you just got through saying. You want this signed and it's maybe subject to change. Yes, what I'm saying, I want this sign to have the ability to hire an electrician. Okay. Going forward, we're looking at two things. We're looking at a full-time electrician on right. staff. We're Perfect. looking at advertisements from other communities, town of Bourne, town of Rainham, and see what they put in for specifications, their rates and the whole nine yards. So we'll have that as, a, as an example. We're also going to talk to Mr. Kinsman if he supplied us an electrician full-time, I mean, <coughs> sorry, 15 to 20 hours a week, dedicated to the plant, what that would cost us. And so we'll have some good comparisons to make a decision how we go forward after this. But immediately, an immediate need, if we, we need an electrician, this. we need okay. this to, so I can hire him in, under this contract. Right. Do I have a... Motion? I make a motion that we uh, sign the contract policy for Kinsman Electrical Services to perform as needed mm -hmm. for the uh, Wayham Sewer Department. Yep. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Three zero zero. And I'll send this. It might be a good idea, I'm just throwing this out to you, to document when you how many hours you use them and what you use them for, a spreadsheet, so that you would be able to quantify that if you need it. We spent $155,000 last year, last year on Kinsman Electric. $155,000 for electrical work through Kinsman. Hmm. We've had other work done through electricians, which is about twenty, thirty thousand. So we're spending about $150,000 to $180,000 nope. a year for electricians. Yeah, take a look at it, guy. We yeah. talked about that. So. Yes, absolutely. It's just the only way to go forward. It sounds like a no-brainer to me. To See have what the numbers are. Yeah. I mean, we, we spend half a million dollars in electricity. We have pumps everywhere, motors everywhere. Electric what we do is a lot of electricity and high, high voltage. Thank you. Now the ASNE contract is for our generators, our new generators. And so we contract with ANSI, which is the Authorized Service of New England. They're the authorized dealer for Generac. And we now have nine Generac computers, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, generators. And so this is their, a service contract, again, that they come in twice a year and make sure those generators are running efficiently and the way they're supposed to. They do a major oil change and, uh, once a year, and once a year, the other time, they come in and do a general. They check belts, fluids, uh, and they make sure the genset itself, the generator, is working as well as the motor. So uh, this is a contract for those individuals. I'm sorry, those nine pump stations from ANSI, who is the representation of the factory, Generac. Okay, is this uh, contract amount of 4740, is that a not to exceed number or? Um, yes, and, and the problem is that we always have to put a number, so it's not to exceed, it definitely will not exceed that um, Where do you see that, that number? number. Yeah. But it's on exhibit B. The contract amount, okay. $4,740. That's what, uh, we took the, the nine generators uh, and, we took that, and we took the cost of doing that and so the contract amount is, will not exceed $4,740. $4,740. The contract will not exceed that number. Okay, so that's, Im that's it. Okay. The, the only question I had on this guy is depending on how much time they spend for each one of these visits, uh, for the thing, so you've only got basically two visits a year. Per unit, yes. Uh, is that number too high? Because the generators are all under warranty right now for two years. They're under warranty, but it does not include service. So if there's a, a breakdown, what we get is we get the service and the parts will be included. The, the, the warranty will cover all parts without a question. Um, in most warranties we have, labor is always excluded. 
It's amazing how that works, but labor's excluded. Unless it's a factory recall, a factory, you know, a, a problem that they created, then most times they'll pick up the, um, the service, they pick up the labor costs. Um, but again, if it's a service issue with the product by factory, we shouldn't have to spend that money. We always fight not to spend right. that money. So the maximum it could, could be would be 4740. Correct. Correct. In the past, we wouldn't even do a contract because it's under the $5,000, well under the $5,000. Yeah. Yeah. But the new policies contract everything. And because if you look at procurement law, this, this doesn't even need a contract. But we're going to have one because the law says anything under five thousand dollars is best judgment. This is well under five thousand, but moving forward, we just do it just so we have a. Now, is this clear AS any? Uh, uh, this is a company. Of it's authorized service of New England. Okay, all right. It's the company. Okay. I make a motion that we uh, approve the uh, authorized services of New England contract for the generators for the Wareham Sewer Department. No, I'll second up. Okay, all in favor. Aye. Aye, aye. aye. It's three zip and zip up. And the last one is, is Holland Company. And all we're asking to do is they supply, supply our pack, polyaluminum chloride, which is to precipitate out phosphorus. We have a phosphorus limit of 0 0.2. So we have to pull the phosphorus out of the waste stream so it doesn't go into the river. And we have a contract with them that's going to expire. We're asking just to simply renew it. They've agreed to renew it at last year's prices for another year. And so and that letter is in the very back. You see the letter yeah. from Holland. So we, it makes no sense to go out the bid or anything. They won the bid last year. They beat, there's nobody else competed. Matter of fact, they were the sole bidder. So it just makes more sense just to extend this out for another no, year. It's just procurement, right? Yes. Yes. No. I make a motion that we approve the Holland Company Incorporated contract for the Wayham Sewer Department. And I, I will second that also. As well. All in favor? Aye. 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 Three zippy. That's the way you get things done. We've got a couple things coming down to you guys. Okay. Mr. Campina, you're on center stage. Well, I, I really don't have a whole lot. I thought you would take longer, so I'll be oh, very good. brief. I apologize for that. Yeah, I uh, don't that's all right. Is one of them I can sign? That's one you can sign. Okay. Pay attention, will you? Sorry. It's tough. Okay. Sure. Um, sorry. Nope. You forgive me. So, the, the, so you know, the uh, new generator at Cohasset Narrows installed and up and running. The new generator at Ruggles Street Pump Station is up and running. <coughs> and Monday morning, we'll put the new generator at Kendrick. And that completes the nine. So we've done nine generators, and we're going to continue doing three years until we get them all replaced. Yep. Um, and the reason why we're doing them is they're antiquated. The one at Kendrick is not working, so we have no generator there. And we need it obviously to run pumps and whatnot. And it's also part of our permit. The, you know, we are, we're mandated, so just so you know, so you the know equipment that. you prioritize, take them in order. Mm -hmm. sure. That's exactly. what you get paid to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted the board to be aware no. that, that yeah. that's what we're doing. Um, we have some projects going on. I think the board asked me last week, and I, I have the numbers coming for you, when I talked about a performance bond, or actually a warranty bond, for tapping into the force main, and also for the inspection of the force main. The numbers, the real hard numbers are a million dollars in costs, direct costs for the, the piping, the pumps, um, and then they talk about 24 hour maintenance, so it's at the hard cost is a million dollars. Environmental is an unknown. They pegged a million dollars for environmental. So the, wor the, the best case scenario would be a $2 million bond. That's a real hard number. 
and that's to tie into that sewer main. And the reason why the bond should be for at least a year, maybe longer, is that if a problem manifests down the road seven to eight months, we need the funds to make that correction because that force main from Narrows to the pump station has the ability, if it's not working, to shut down the whole west side of town. And so if we do have a break or if there is a failure in their, in their tapping in, then we need to be able to get the piping, the bypass piping, the, the, the contractors to install that bypass pump, uh, uh, piping. All the, we have the school tied to it, we have Brandy Hill tied to it, we have the condom, uh, condominiums tied to it. Those folks we'd have to deal with. Um, we don't, I don't know what that would be, um, whether we bypass them because they have their pump stations, so we'd be financially obligated to that. And so if anything were to happen, I want the assurance that the town is not gonna spend one nickel on that process. So I'm recommending a $2 million bond. That's the bare minimum. And I know there was some discomfort with that much money, but to protect the town, I believe we should do the very bare minimum $2 million bond, and it should be for at least six months. I'm suggesting a year. Okay, what's, what's the approximate cost of that? Of what? The bond. I have no idea. I didn't look into that. Because That's we'll really be paying for it. No, the contractor pays for it. Yeah, we'll be paying for it. No, the, the contractor contract. is the contractor is asking us to tie into our sewer so he can build his condominiums, his buildings. Okay. But I know what you're saying. Okay. We're not paying for it because he's going to cover the percentage, or whatever part of that we're paying for. Exactly. Well, how we? I, I, to my ignorance, I, I want to understand that how Get we. Get the shells out. It's in his overhead. Get the shells out. That's what Jimmy's saying. Okay, so he's going to pay. The, the, he's going to. He's going to pass on. He's going to yeah, pass on. So I agree with you. The person buying that condo, buying that unit, yes, will pay all those costs. Absolutely. Okay. I agree with you 100%. As but long as it's not coming out of our pocket, I agree. they can do what they want. What, what's the cost of the bond for that period of time? I'm not sure. I, I really don't have any. I can, if you want me to ask, I will, I will find I'm out. I'm curious. Yeah, I am I, curious, too. I honestly do not know I what the cost would be to the contractor. What we're, what we're talking about when we take and throw these things out. Because I just simply wanted to make sure the real hard costs that we would we would be exposed. No, that's. To. I mean, that's good to know. It's it's good to know that because that changes just the kind amount of bond and it changes the the duration. I just which kind is of fine. Yeah, I'd I'd like to know what we're yeah. doing to somebody that has exactly. to tap in. Exactly. We should I mean, know. I'd like to have some idea myself. An idea. I, I yeah. can ask. I'd have to call some insurance companies and yeah. and find but out. Wouldn't what, that guy too depend on on the contractor? No, like sure. Contractor with more no. history, more experience is going to get a better rate. Absolutely, yep. and, and contractors. I'm sure. Uh, so, uh, Mr. White, who you work with, your contractor, your company. I'm sure they have bondability. I'm lot. sure they oh, do yeah. bonds like we crazy. So yeah. you do them so often, it may be inexpensive. And I don't know the particular company that's building these three uh, duplexes. Yeah. I really don't know, um, and I can't tell you what the cost of them is. I really can't. And to be perfectly frank, I really wasn't looking into that. I was more concerned with protecting the ratepayers, protecting the town, yeah. because if there's an environmental impact, if they in the process of doing this, because it's a wet death, which means that pipe is live, and they break it, and it goes right. down no, to the I, river. I don't we own that. I don't disagree I with all that. that. That's, so that's I was not looking the at the cost. I, and I'm, I'm just, I'm just looking at it. Um, I think both of us are looking at it from the standpoint that we would like to have an idea of what would in, impact on to the, somebody. I want to know what the transfer impact is. Cost. I can get you so that. So I can say, okay, I'm, I'm on board with that. Yeah. Um, what it may do, and I'm thinking aloud, it may. It may um, weed out contractors you don't want working on your main. True. Because they can't afford the bond. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking. I agree with you. We have too much to lose. Um, the, what, and the other suggestion was tell them they do nothing until we have that inspected. Because once it's inspected, we'll know the condition and we know the probability of damage as a tapping. If that's a very thin mm -hmm. wall, Yep. We're asking for trouble we because we talked about that. You'll get a yeah. coupon on that one. We, and so maybe it's wiser to say, listen, until we tap that line, inspect it, we're not going to. We won't. We don't feel comfortable. And that may address the bond issue. If we feel comfortable, we can say, okay, um, maybe, maybe not that they need or don't need a bond. But I just want the town protected. It's too often that the cost comes back to the town that we have to cover costs of things we don't think about going into any type of this. Now that is our nature. line, so if there is some our degradation line. of the line, now that comes back to us. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. 
So, so there, there would be probably a, be some kind of a disclaimer on the bond. I'm sure there is. At some point in the connection. So. You know, so and if we inspected that pipe and we found it to have to be very integral, yeah. then it, it lessens our responsibility. If we find it not to be integral, we can say nobody taps into it because we'd want to repair it, fix it. We don't want to take the chance of losing that line. It's so critical to operations. So I just want to think this through. I don't want to do yeah, anything yeah. haphazardly and uh, that comes Which back to Which project is this? Is this down This is uh, on Minot Avenue. Yeah, I know. Right yeah. across They haven't from, done anything, right? No, they're, they're wanting to move forward. They wanted to be, they wanted to have at least one building up and running for sales yeah. to market it. And so they're waiting on me giving the bond numbers. As soon as I give them the bond numbers, they're going to move forward. Tell them what they, the bonds are going to be Are they condos or are they rentals? They are three. I, I, yeah, they're three duplexes. duplexes. Oh, three Each duplexes. individual own their duplex. So they be, do own them. Okay. Yes, it'll be owned by the, you buy this duplex, you buy this. So it's really condo, I call it condos. They're yeah. calling duplexes. Yeah. yeah. That will be owned, well, I, you I, buy I, I got to tell you, the way the housing thing is around here, I'd hate to squash them, but we got to do what we got to do. No, we, no there's question. a shortage right now. You know, absolutely. It's terrible. Uh, my intent is not to, it's terrible. but if we do nothing and we have a problem, it's ours. Yeah. We own it. Oh, we should know all it is. Order of magnitude <laughs> yeah. of what it's going to cost. I'd like to see how it works with experience rating. Okay. So maybe it's more affordable for some guys and, mm -hmm. and it's less passed on to the owner. Mm. I don't know exactly how it's structured, but. I, I have no concept. I, I've never had to be bought. I had Probably to just take a phone it. call or two. And Look, I'll have the girls tomorrow to call me. some insurance companies and see what the deal is. You may be pleasantly surprised. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> nice. Uh, okay. So I, I, will, I will get that, but I just wanted the board, because the last time we talked, you wanted me to get the numbers, right. so I called the, the, the piping company, the whole nine yards, and put our hard numbers together for some real, real scenarios, and uh, so that's mm, the cost. That makes a lot more sense. So yeah, and, uh, yeah, because I, I I'm conservative. Unknowns scare yeah, me, yeah. so I want to I want oh, to add an extra million for the unknowns. That why I'm I with you three to yeah. five because I was, I was petrified. Um, no, not really. I had some okay. things, but well, I, our, um, seeing as our watchdog, unfortunately, uh, to our dismay, is no longer with us. Uh, I'm. I would like to have you, if you uh, feel you're ready to, I want to give us a quick overview of that screw press thing you had absolutely. down there playing. Um, yeah, I, I, I certainly will. Just, um, so the I mean, brief, not, to, not the big detail, no, but just brief, the I'll do it in memory of Chris. Um, it's a screw <laughs> press. Thank you for coming. Um, no, um, the bottom line, um, we right now truck our sludge in tankers to be burnt at the incinerator in Cranston. We're spending approximately $410,000, $415,000 a year to do that. Yep. and we're sending it out at 5%. We're doing a pilot test on a screw press, which takes those s same um, activated sludge that we waste, mm -hmm. or, or uh, and we take the same sludge, and the screw press converts it to a 20% cake. And we've done, we spent the week, and we ended yesterday of doing a test on this, a pilot test, and we're getting 20 to 22% solids. So that means that we'll truck 22% solids to the landfill, opposed to 5% to the uh, cinerator. Um, and the other thing is, is when you remove all that water, you have less trips to the landfill. And we already have a contract with Turnkey, which is uh, run by Waste Management in New Hampshire. We guesstimated that cost to be about a quarter of a million dollars. What we're looking to do, what the engineers will do when it's all said and done, we'll put some hard numbers for you. The, the investment for that machine is about $350,000. It's about 17 to 18 feet long. It's a little short one came in the trailer for the testing. It's about 17, 18 foot long. And what impresses me is that it's tied into our skater system controls that, it comes on and off, we can program it to, and we can get a more consistent feed um, and even minimize our trips to the landfill. So we're looking into this, it, it makes sense to look into. What drove me to this is we're having a hard time getting rid of liquid. I have days I can't even get a truck to remove my liquid. We average one and a half trucks per day. There are days I can't get any trucks. It's becoming and the costs are ex escalating. We just put out another bid for this because I have to keep doing it. 
uh, we expect that bid to go up considerably because of the wait time now at Cranston. So that, that bid should go up to 450 to close to 400 close to $500,000 to get rid of our sludge. So we're looking at alternatives. How can we save money accomplishing the same thing? Okay, with, uh, with the figures you're trying to get together, will this give us a potential output uh, is what this would produce and what it would save us? Yes. So we'll have a cost-benefit relationship. You're going to have a cost-benefit because what we're looking at is we're going to give you our cost presently. So you know what our present costs are. I know what that is. We're going to look at the, the percent solids of the screw press. That's why we did the press. And we did it for continually for five days because we wanted to have some real numbers, you know, afternoon, morning. So we have some real numbers to give you the consistency and percent solids we're putting out. We'll take that. And, and what the engineers will do is take the hard numbers of how much, because once you dry it out, if you will, it becomes a percent solid. How much of the dewatering that we're increasing it, that we're not going to put into the landfill or burn, that savings, how often we got to go to landfill. So they'll tell you exactly what that cost is going to be. Um, what we got, what we're going to actually spend to take that product once it's been through the screw press to the landfill in the course of a year. We'll have that's a hard number. It, you know, it's all by solids. Weight. It's all by weight. All right. Um, the dry weight, pretty much, is what we're talking about. As we take the water out, because the drier it becomes, it's it's a weight, it's and then math. it's it's all math, and then the number. So they can give you all that stuff. And then we're going to look at the cost of the unit. Yep. We'll look at installing the unit. That'll be a cost. And we'll do all these comparisons. Then we'll look at the benefit of and doing it. The and also the amortization we'll of it. Do that. You'll have that too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's one of those things that we, we would not be doing our due diligence if we didn't, ex because liquid is starting to climb like crazy. And it's harder to get rid of. And I don't want to be in a position someday to not be able to get rid of my so liquid we'll, or have somebody we'll put hold this us off, power. off till we get some more numbers. Oh, something. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. We'll get some numbers and we'll present the numbers. Absolutely. Can you absolutely. give us the Reader's Digest version of the survey? The yeah. survey is complete. There's a copy. I have another copy here. This is the survey of the rail. Of the what? The railroad train. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. So the, we had a meeting a couple weeks ago on this very thing, and we're presently surprised. We're pleased. It's, uh, it's encouraging. The, if you look, you'll see that the easement or the right-of-way is larger than we anticipated which is really great, which means that getting a pipe along the sides of that rail is very encouraging. There's a couple of spots that really shrink down. I believe one is by the Depot Street area where you got the Depot Street crossing. I think there's an ownership that gets really thin there. And I think it's down to about 40 feet, then it opens back up to about 80 feet. Uh, I think somewhere is even greater. Um, so we feel that we'll have no issues. On the road crossings, we believe it would be best to go under the rail at that point, at the road crossing, just drill mm -hmm. under it, and come back up into the wider areas. Um, we are really pleased with the results. And what I found really interesting that the last hard set of plans was 18, I want to say 1890-something, and revised in 1903 or whatever. This is the most up-to-date plans of that entire rail from our plant oh. all the way to the Cape Cod Canal. This tells them everything they need to know. So we met with um, our Susan Gifford last week, mm -hmm. and we're asking her to help us get in front of the proper people at the Department of Transportation for the rail service, sit with them, uh, go over these plans, um, give us some clear direction, endorse our product, project, and tell us we have the go-ahead. And then we'll start looking at the hard line, where to put the line in. So for me, it's very encouraging. Once we get the go-ahead to look at that, I think it's at that point, it's very encouraging. Seems like we're moving ahead. We absolutely are. We anticipated. Mm -hmm. Yes. Next week, the 24th, I have a meeting at 1.30 at Massachusetts Maritime Academy. We're going to be talking to the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. Okay, they're doing the, the modeling. They've got the modeling out in the bay. They did the modeling of right. whether the discharge is going to be and where the water is going to go, given the current tides, the current you know, s uh, swiftness of the canal. And so what we're looking at is, as the tide goes either way, is it going to impact the Buttermilk Bay area, the Onset Bay area, the Sandwich Basin? Where is it going to go? So they're doing that modeling, and they're going to present it to us. Um, when is that meeting? It's uh, the 24th. 
June 24th? Uh, May, next week. Oh, okay. next yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, okay. At one thirty. And I, I may even have on me the, I can tell you, it's a, what the room is the technology room. And there'll be a slide presentation, and they'll okay. do a good job of really what presenting time to us. 1.30? 1.30. And I, if I don't have it immediately, actually, I'll email everybody mm -hmm. the location, the room, and the whole nine yards. It's, we're really excited about that. The buoys are uh, deployed, and so we're getting a really good, hard uh, concept of numbers and speeds and the whole nine yards for the excuse me, the swiftness of the bay. We know what the discharge of the mass maritime, we know what our discharge is. So once this modeling is done, it's just a matter of plugging numbers. And then we can see what the impact would be, which the EPA needed to know, fisheries needs to know. And so once we put out that impact, room, that'll help us at that end. A lot of room. Mm, it's amazing. Nice. It's amazing to us. Uh, it's nice for us. Mm. It's nice for us. Yeah. It is. Because in the interim, I'm just for giggles, I'm getting a quote to directional drill from the plant to mass maritime, just for a number, because it's the technology of directional drilling and trenches technology is incredible. As a side note, I've been recently appointed on the board of directors of the North American uh, Society of Trenches Technology for New England. I've been appointed on the board of directors, so I am now one on the board of directors. And so I know some folks that do directional drilling. I'm going to do some research and see what it would cost me if we had to go that route. So it's, it's, uh, we're really moving forward. We're really moving forward. Okay. Well, thank you very much, sir. You're hey, welcome. I have a yeah, question. Uh, what is... Um, you gave us a list of the of the people that haven't paid yet. Yes. What what to, one what and if is there anything we can do about it or what? Well, it's for our now for your knowledge of the board. Yeah. I know that the chim was well, talking I about. I haven't got an answer from legal yet on. Oh, okay. Enforcement to do how we can go forward. Well, I'm going to do your research. Yes, sir. Please, yes, sir. Okay, so. I mean, the bylaw gives us some, some discretion and gives us some direction, but we need to vet that with uh, Mr. Bowen. But the bylaw says we have a right to find these folks. It's simple as that. We do have that right. Well, let's, I think, by getting opinion from legal, send the bylaw. Here's the bylaw. What do you think? Because I'd been down this road about four years ago, five years ago, and it wasn't as cut and dry as I thought it was. That's all I want to well, say about that. That's the problem. We're well, taking a court action. That's when I asked him about it, you know, it was... He was. He wasn't de definitive on anything, yeah. but he was. You know, we'll get back together again. This is the lost income. Yeah. 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 But they've all paid their betterments, right? Well, yeah, they've all paid betterments. They all, yeah, the betterments. Yeah, the betterments. This is the just the loss of income yeah. that we're. But they're not. Loss of they're income. not supporting the operation of the plant. No. That's basically what it comes but, down to. I don't know. I'm just looking on the other so side. What's, what's, Let me what's, say this. What's Every the time, usual I'm sorry. They, they have a good in-ground system. Is that the no, a lot of these have failed septic systems. They just simply refuse to tie in. What's really interesting to me is when you build these sewers and you, and you, you actually budget the cost of running a pump station and the money for that running that pump station, you factor in by people tying in. So if you don't tie in, everybody else has got to cover the cost around that pump station. You have that line in front of your house. And remember, this project was based upon protecting the bay. It's I understand. Not as simple. It's, it isn't, and I understand people saying it's not, it's not, we don't, but for every septic system in system. the ground, there's well, a the whole, cost to our bay. But the whole thing we're not, we're not addressing here is if they've got a failed system, if they have that's a not our system, problem. No, they, it isn't. That's the Board of Health. And the Board of Health won't know until they actually do a transfer. I understand. In terms of that, nobody knows. That's right. But nobody if they have knows. a failed system, they should be required Well, they, if, to if tie the Board of Health knows about it, they would, would require it. You cannot, if sewer is available, you they cannot can't. put a septic system. Septic you cannot. That's the law. That's DEP rules and regulations. You can bounce around, there are some exceptions. I heard that a week ago. And there's some exceptions, and the exceptions pertain to if you're in an area that that septic system is going to recharge the water and it's the right septic system. An IA, they may allow it that you'd stay on that system, but there's very, very thin exceptions to that. So if you are close to sewer, or if sewer is in front of your home, even down the road, I believe it's the number, the, the actual terminology is reasonable distance. 
Yeah. So what's that interpretation? A thousand feet? Eight I've miles. heard people at 1,500 feet. I but heard. the point is, uh, the point is, is that the goal is to get sewer online and septics out because we know the damage they do to the bay. I mean, it's just that simple. Um, the further away you get from the bay, then there's an argument. If you're 15 miles from the bay, well, maybe you can make an argument. But remember, you got rivers running under the ground. So we're finding uh, that somebody that's five miles up th the other side of the watershed can have some effect because once it hits that river, it travels to the ocean. And this is all scientific. Uh, if you well, look the water at the New Hampshire, is finding that. Problem. Everybody's finding it. Yeah. Everybody's having problems. That's the reason for the plant that they're trying to build. Need to. So it's a real issue, and we don't. And I understand that. You know, I don't. I, I really understand people's point of view. I truly do. But the big picture is preserving our waterways for the future, for our kids, grandkids, the tourists. My gosh, if we continue to pollute the bay and we weren't cleaning it, what does that do to our tourism? There's not going to be beach systems. So there's a bigger picture here, okay. and I know I don't want to lose sight of it. So okay. that's where we are with that. Um, okay. Right. Rattling along. Uh, policy updates. Peter isn't here, and Susan isn't here, so those are the two main ones connected with that, uh, as well as consolidation. So that's still going to stay on the agenda for the next time. Uh, discussion regarding the water, uh, Wareham Water District. I have, we are on their agenda for Monday night. Uh, Monday night uh, coming up. Yep. Yeah. Just coming Monday. All right. Anybody know the date? I mean, if you can do it, fine. If you can't, what time? Uh, what is it? Five thirty. Five thirty. Like that. Five thirty, six o'clock. Something yeah, like that. Early. They have early. They have early. They they're not allowed out, out late at night. Be twenty two, right? 22nd, yeah. Monday the 22nd. 22 May. And it's right at the, dist at the water district building. Correct. Okay. Uh, any new business? I think we've pretty much covered all the that type of stuff. Pretty much. I mean, we have a project that's coming online that, that they're trying to get in. I think it's on Redbrook Road. Uh, I, I had some information, but I'm going to hold off. I think that's going to be modified. Uh, you probably had a scuttle about You'll also, 6 and 28, we had a meeting uh, yesterday. Um, Brian attended it. Uh, we're asked to look at all that. We have 35 manholes on 6 and 28 where they're going to do the project beginning in 2018. We may need to replace covers. We're going to do some inspections over the summer of all those manholes. So when they do the highway project, we'll, it'll address that. The fence is going to change at the pump station because right next to it's going to become a retention area. It's one of the modern retention areas that actually treat water. Um, there's been a lot of drainage issues in that area. It, anybody driving down in the rainstorm, you know, they close the road down. This isn't going to be one of those mosquito nests, is it? I'm, I'm not, it's not supposed to because it's really not supposed to carry water. It's supposed to be a filtration cleaning system that doesn't carry water. In the old days, or the old retention ponds, they were designed to carry water, slowly leach in. These are going to be rapid infiltrators, so you have a minimal amount of water being carried, and that addresses the mosquitoes. There's also going to be vegetation to suck up, so there's a lot, it's really an interesting design. But that's happening, so I'll, I'll update we the board as we go along. So that's all the new business and new stuff going on. Uh, I don't even remember. What I don't remember it. this one either. Uh, the sewer connection appeal from Mr. Levitt. So um, that, so yeah, that was for your information. So I am, I am sending a letter to Mr. Levitt requesting from him the, um, his solution. Um, I'll give you a brief history of that. Yeah, re so, re refresh my memory. Yeah, I know that, we... I'll give you a brief history. This has been on for quite some time. It started in 2011. Um, Mr. Levitt and his two neighbors live in Cremesit, and the front of their property comes onto Cremesit Road. However, they have this common driveway. It's like a big horseshoe, and I believe it's Point Road or something that they've named it. So it's a common driveway. So they were told originally by the superintendent that they did not have to tie in. So they hung the hat on that. When we tied them in, we, got, we gave them laterals on Cremesit Road because their property extends to Cremesit Road. We bettered them and they challenged us. The board uh, of Selectman Sewer Commissioners denied their application for abatement of the $18,000. We kept it in. They appealed that decision um, to, they appealed that decision and so here we are. We got a letter from Mr. Levitt a year ago saying he's got a solution. So what I'm asking for now is that letter of solution. 
and I'm going to sit down with our town attorney, review that, and at that point, recommendation will be made to the board as to what, how we should progress. Because of the potential litigation, I, I probably said too much. I don't think it's something we should discuss any further, but that's what we that's talked right. about already. That's pretty open, that's but that's where we are with it. May I ask a question? Certainly. Uh, what about the uh, the army, uh, the, the, the uh, Tremont Nail people? The Tremont Nail people, the Assads. Assads. They have given us a. They have sent us a. Um, and this, I don't think, is in litigation. So, but they have sent us a a check, and asked us to release them from their obligation. The check is considerably less than we charged. I mean, I'm talking considerable. I should have put the percent to it. They, I think we asked them for 12,000. They offered us two. So we're going to review it. I'm looking at it now. I'm, they gave us some math. They feel they should be charging us for electricity, and so we owe them. And so I got to really vet through their reasoning. When I looked at it real quick and talked to Mr. Bowen, I said this is ridiculous, uh, but I'm going to vet it real closely. I'm going to take every point they made and, and, and address it, and then I'll sort Mr. Bowen and we'll go from there. What does he have to say thus far on it? Or is he just uh, I, 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 or is he I'd just rather pulling, not say, but he's, he's, just, pulling certainly the, he's just pulling the, the as baffled as I am. Pulling the door shut. Okay. That was as baffled as I there am. There was really nothing ever yeah. signed, right? No. So, so, so hopefully, we're we're not, hopefully we're not going to agree to. At this point, I, I believe there's no intention of agreeing. The very least, we're going to not release them from their obligation and not going to allow them to continue on until we resolve this. Okay. Okay. That's, 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 that was, I okay, I'm going to throw out some potential meeting dates. Okay. Uh, for June. One fifteen twenty two. Excuse me. One fifteen twenty two. Those three. Okay. Oh, June first and the first, fifteenth, and twenty second. Right. Now I understand what you're saying. I was, oh, went to sleep for a minute. I'm sorry. Second. You got them back to back there, Jimmy. Huh? Fifteen and twenty two is back to back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because uh, the following week is just before the Fourth of July, and okay. you know you're going to be taken off on vacation probably three days before that. Yeah. Make a long uh, Fourth of July. I week. may have to take. I'm on vacation. Last not that it matters. My but pup. The first. Mine I'm Wednesday. on vacation. Hmm? I'm picking up mine Wednesday. What'd you get? Shepherd. Huh? What'd you get? Another French Brittany. And July 13, 27. 13 and 27. July. Yeah, that's fine. Mr. Chairman, the first of June, I'm on vacation. I'll miss so the 27th. Again? Yeah. So, you know, I, you know, you just year, so I am, you went last year, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I, and it's it bad because I've got to use time before my anniversary date in September or I lose it. I really don't like taking vacations. I like working. I, I'm one of those weird people that really thoroughly enjoys working. I need to but talk need to you. To, yeah. What you yeah. probably yeah. should do You're then, young. <laughs> what you should probably do but then. My doctor's like, that's 64. She's saying I better start slowing down. What you should do is let your wife take the vacation and you work. Day. I, she would probably go along with it. <laughs> She would probably go along with it, <laughs> but uh, I, I will. I'm not. But I won't suggest it. <laughs> and one other matter before we turn. Yep. How, how, how's the uh, complaints down in the Lad Abbott area? So far, so so good. So good. so I, so I you know. I don't anything. know if you if you've. T we still have the odor hotline, but we've changed. The, we're changing the basin every three weeks. We keep it down very very minimal amount. We we found that by doing it every three weeks is very minimal amount of solids to go so we're really good. I also have a guy coming down we're trying to meet next week we've got some protein uh, it's called protein matrix that cuts down grease odors and all that good stuff we're gonna look at that we'll do an experiment so yeah it's we're trying to do a lot of things uh, to, oh, okay. to work at it so it's Mr. crazy Chairman, I make a motion that we adjourn Back. I'll second that <laughs> all in favor Aye. Aye. ladies and gentlemen thank you for watching until the next time he is...